This is my 5 octave marimba 1 Izzy. I've had it since 2016, that's almost seven years. That's why it still has the old logo. It's the base model, traditional keyboard and classic resonators, and it came in this awesome copper color. It sounds great, it looks great. It's really easy to assemble and disassemble, and I really like the gas lift. So that's why this instrument is my favorite instrument of all time. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be your favorite too. <laughs> When I first was shopping for a marimba six years ago, it was very difficult for me to figure out which one was which because they all had really outstanding claims on their website. We make the world's finest instruments. Our bars are specifically hand-picked and tuned. We painstakingly hand-build each frame for over 100 hours a day. And even to this day, even though I'm a marimba one artist now, people still ask me what kind of five octave marimba they should go for, what I think about different models. So, here is the top 15 five octave marimbas tier list. I've made tier lists about marimba solos before and I decided why not make a tier list about marimbas because there are just so many of them out there and PASIC is coming up as well and now that it's been you know, almost six years since I bought my marimba, things have changed quite a lot. Okay, so here's the tier list that I've made. It's a top 15 list of all the five octave marimbas available on Steve Weiss Music, sorted by most popular and we're not including things like field frames for marching or practice frames, just five octave marimbas that are made for performance purposes. And on the left hand side, we have our tiers. We've got Best Buy, Good Buy, Worth a Try, Just Okay, and Meh. Now I have to disclose a couple of things. Firstly, as I've already said, I'm a Marimba 1 artist. So naturally I will be biased towards Marimba 1. Naturally Marimba 1 is going to be in the Best Buy tier, but I'm still interested in the rest of the list. I have actually tried every single one of these instruments before. And if there was ever a situation where I couldn't access my regular Marimba 1 instrument, and I had to choose one of these brands, I've always thought it would be interesting to see what my second and third choices would be. And secondly, this video is totally my opinion, okay? It's not objective at all. Some people prefer different sound profiles, like some people prefer more bass, some people prefer more treble, some people prefer instruments that are easy to pack down because they're moving it around a lot, some people prefer instruments that are just looking really good but are static because they're just leaving it in the house. So everyone has different demands, I also have different demands, so don't take this video too seriously, okay? Okay, so let's start off from the top here. We've got the Adams Alpha on the Apex frame. That's the Z-shaped frame. So I have played on Adams Alphas many, many times. I played on it when I was at Chosen Vale in 2016 because Nancy Zeltzman herself was there. So every instrument was an Adams Alpha. I didn't particularly like the Voyager frame. That's this frame, the one that's like a hourglass shape. That frame is like, Mm. <laughs> that frame was really wobbly because of the design and it's really hard to take apart because there are so many individual parts. Literally, there was like five cases for one side of the instrument and another five cases for the other side. It was just super troublesome. The Z frame is also a really interesting design to me. I don't really understand why the instrument is like angled away from you, if that makes sense. Uh, when you increase the height, it kind of moves further or moves closer from you because it's on an angle. It's a very interesting design, but I will say the frame definitely looks a lot more sturdy than the Voyager frame. I don't know what they were thinking with the Voyager frame. Design wise, okay, I gotta give them points for being different. It definitely looks more modern and unique. Uh, I don't really like the stacked resonator look, the whole boxy stacked resonator thing. That's something from like the 90s. I don't mind the sound of the Adams instruments. They actually sound pretty good, pretty warm, similar to Marimba 1, although I would say Marimba 1 has more bass um, and Marimba 1 speaks a little more at the top for my personal taste. So, yeah, I will say, let's put Adams in, I'd say it's a good buy. Nice. Yeah, if I could choose any brand other than Marimba 1, if I had to, it probably would be Adams. And I would also say that Adams is just like a bigger company and they're a little bit more established. So yeah, it's not a bad pick at all. Bergerol Signature. Okay, the Bergerol Signature Marimba is actually undergone some improvements because the last Bergerols I've played on have been the Bergerol Performer series, I think it was. I might have played on a Bergerol Signature actually over East. The frame design is very similar actually to Marimba 1. It's like the squarish sort of frame and it's got some sort of high adjustment system. I don't know about the assembly details, but yeah, it's just not an instrument that really like appeals to me that much. And Bergerol used to be a lot cheaper. It used to be known as like the entry level brand for most countries, but now it's kind of on par with most of the other brands. So I'm just gonna say it's, it's just okay. Okay. It's not terrible. It's not the worst, but it's just okay. <laughs> 
Demorrow. Okay, this is the Demorrow Studio. I think it's like the one below the concert one. It's the only Demorrow that I could see on Steve Weiss, and it's the only Demorrow that was kind of reasonably priced because most Demorrow instruments, the higher end ones, are really expensive. The Gordon Stout one is almost thirty thousand US dollars. Like I don't know any five octave rimba that goes up to thirty thousand US dollars. That's crazy. Now in the United States, people really love Demoro. I've heard so many good things about them. I have played on a Demoro before at PASIC. I thought the sound was actually pretty decent, like it was quite resonant. Uh, that might have more to do with the bar quality than anything else. But I think, yeah, definitely the Demoro sound is nicer than the Bergerol. Uh, would I say the frame design is particularly nice? It looks very rudimentary, even on their higher end models. It's just a lot of exposed hardware. And some people like that. Some people like that sort of rustic finish, or they care more about the sound, or they care more about the fact that it's made by Demoro. A lot of people, I would say, would put Demoro up here. Like they would say Demoro is like the best of all time. I'm gonna say it's worth a try. Yeah. Majestic Concert Black. The Majestic Concert Black, I have played Majestic Concert Blacks before at PASIC as well. I thought it was okay. I wouldn't say it was outstanding. The sound profile again to me sounds kind of hollow. It doesn't really have that sort of deep warmth that I prefer. Uh, some people like that more hollow sound because they like to play more you know, articulate, really bright pieces. I'm, mm, I'm not really that sold on that. The Majestic bar spacing is definitely on the wider side compared to brands like Marimba One and Yamaha and Adams. It's not a bad instrument. I would say it's still a little bit more interesting than the Bergerol. The resonator design is definitely different. And I do like that it's all black as well. That's kind of clean, whereas the Bergerol looks a little bit yeah, with the lacquered finish. For the Majestic people out there, I will say, all right, if you like Majestic, it's worth a try. But the Majestic Reflection Marimba. Okay, this Marimba, I tried it when it first came out at PASIC in 2018, and I have to say I was severely disappointed. <laughs> it doesn't sound very good. If anything, I think the Concept Black actually sounds better. It seems to just not have any sort of resonance. And the frame design, how they've made it into these like four individual sections, that must be so difficult to assemble and disassemble because you've got so many little parts. And I always think the more joining parts that you have for you know important stress points like the horizontal beams, the more likely those things are going to start to fail over time. So I'd be a little bit cautious about the design of this majestic thing. I also don't really like those white resonators. I know you can get it in black as well, but the white resonators Nah, <laughs> just I will give them points for trying. However, I will say that it is pretty cool that they're trying to innovate and do something different. But this this is just not really. Yeah, it's, okay. it's just OK. Malatek. OK, so we've got the three. No, we've got four Malateks here. Malatek is still pretty big in the United States. We've got here. I think this is the Grand Imperial. This one's the m -Tech, This one's the MJB and this one's the Solello. So the Imperial Grand. Okay, the Imperial Grand I have played before. I played one in Melbourne. Uh, it was very long. <laughs> the Imperial Grand is like almost 1.5 times the length of my Marimba One Izzy because the bars at the bottom are so wide. So the frame has to like extend out even further. And that alone put me off so much because it's just, I don't know. I just think it's really unnecessary to have such big bars at the bottom. And yeah, it's just really expensive as well. It's more expensive than I think most of the Marimbas on this list. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> M-Tech. Okay, now M-Tech is the opposite. I'd actually say M-Tech is one of Malatech's better instruments. I've heard a lot of good things about their Paduk. Apparently, it's really good. Uh, I also like that the design is just a little bit more normal. <laughs> it's not so like absurdly wide at the bottom and it's just like regular size bars. So for that, I will say M-Tech is just okay. okay. Apparently, it's also a really good price too. So there you go. Okay, this one is gonna get me roasted, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I personally think the MJB Marimba is overrated. It is so big. <laughs> like the, the resonators are so big. I have played this as well. I have disassembled this Marimba as well. And literally when you're standing behind it, if you want to move closer to the Marimba, the resonator is actually in your way because it juts out into the playing area and to where your feet are going to be. So you just have this massive pipe in front of your feet. And the amount of times I bang my foot on that resonator, Oh, 
Like I have to give Biotech points for their design. You know, obviously they tried to make something different, but it's just like the pipes are so big and they just look really cheap in person because they're literally just like straight aluminum cuts and it's just like Bleh. In terms of assembly, again, same problem as the Imperial Grand. It's just like a lot of things that you need to adjust to put it together. And it's a very time consuming process, very heavy as well because those resonators are just unnecessarily big. And yeah, you'd think with resonators like that, it would sound better, but what I can say is it sounds like if you get an EQ and you basically put the lowest frequency of bass, like really high up, and then you put everything in the middle, like all the mid range, mid low, mid high and middle frequencies down and then the top one up. <laughs> and then it's just a very bright instrument. So I'm just going to put it in there. <laughs> Sorry, MJB fans, and no hate to Michael, the person, like he seems like a pretty decent person, but the marimba is just... Mm. Malatech Stiletto. Okay, so Stiletto, I reckon, will go in the same place as MTech because the okay. Stiletto, again, is a normal sized marimba. It doesn't have excessive width. It doesn't look excessive. It doesn't have like big resonators, but the frame design is still very basic, very rudimentary, so... It's just okay. Oh, look at that curve. It's Marimba 1. Okay, so of these three Marimba 1s, we've got the Easy, the Wave, and the 3100. Now, putting aside my endorsement for a second, Marimba 1, the reason why I was drawn to them was because the sound profile matched what I was looking for in my music, like a more warm bass and nice speaking highs without being excessively bright. I really like the frame design. The frame is really strong, really sturdy. It never sags. The hardware is all toolless, so it all just slips in the cases. Literally the best cases of any of the brands on this list. I think they're just really practical, really well padded, and I've never had a problem with them. But yeah, I guess now it just comes down to which frame do I like the best. So the Izzy is like the regular concert frame, the one that I have, and it has like aluminum hardware, and then it's got like the mahogany sides and an aluminum rails. We've got the Wave, which is the more beefy, chunky frame that's fully made of aluminum, and that one is... That's just an awesome instrument. Like it's so strong. You can literally sit on it. I have sat on one before and it has not faltered. <laughs> um, and you can put it through all kinds of terrain. So people use it for marching, but you can also just use it in places like universities where you need to move it around a lot. And then we've got the 3100. The 3100, which is like a beefier version of the Izzy. It's got like a, another piece of mahogany on the side of the frame. I played on a premium Basso Bravo 3100 in Hong Kong, and it was one of the greatest instruments I've ever played on in my life. I don't even want to know how much that thing cost, but it was just beautiful. That being said, if I had to buy these again, I would actually pick the Wave. <laughs> Not that I don't like the Izzy, I actually really love the Izzy, but the Wave design is just really cool. It's like so easy to put together. It's even easier to put together than this one. Then I would say Izzy, of course, and then I would say 3100 Blast because 3100 is more for aesthetics um, and more for looks, but very good looking instruments regardless. Oh, Marimba 1, Ichiban. Okay, we've got our last three five octave instruments here and coincidentally, these two are actually the ones that I studied with when I was in university. So the first one... <laughs> oh, this thing is... This thing is shocking. The Masa M500. The Masa M500 is one of the oldest marimba frame designs in the world. I think it originates from like the late 80s or something. It is so... It's just so wrong. <laughs> okay, firstly, the only positive I would say about the Masa is the sound is okay at lower volumes and not in the lower register. <laughs> that's a very specific set of circumstances, but that's pretty much where all the good things end. I will say, first of all, the frame itself is like way too long. It's literally the same as the Imperial Grand. It's like super long. The whole frame is like a one piece of solid wood. So it's incredibly difficult to take apart and put together, but it's also just not a very good frame. It's a little bit hollow. It's got a crank for height adjustment, but you can only use the tool that comes with it to crank it. It's like a very specific proprietary tool. If you lose that tool, you can't do anything. It's not like a socket. It's nothing like that. You just can't do anything. Resonators, they look terrible. I really don't like this U-shaped design. There's no purpose to it whatsoever. And it looks kind of like plumbing from a toilet. Like it's just not great at all. Uh, the bars, why are they so wide? Why are they so wide at the bottom? And also why are there gaps in between the bars that are like this wide in between the wide bars? So if you wanna have an octave, you basically have to break your wrist in half to have an octave at the bottom of this instrument. For what purpose exactly? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know whether it's because they designed it to be played by two people at once or something. It's just 
so wide at the bottom. Like you can literally fit your hand through the bars. If you don't believe me, go and look at the reviews on Steve Weiss music from Totally Impartial People. It's literally got a rating of two stars. <laughs> I'm not even sure why they still make this instrument. The bars at the bottom are also really thin, like they're paper thin, so they crack really easily. Uh, the ones at the university that I used to study at are already cracked. They're already beyond repair. Nah, this is just, this is totally meh. In fact, it's like the most meh of meh. I'd say it's even more meh than the two Malatex. It's just, it, it should have its own category. Like it's so... <laughs> And now, the final two instruments we have are a Yamaha. We've got the Yamaha YM5100 and the YM6100. Now, the YM5100 is the constant model that you'll see in a lot of universities. It's actually a pretty well-priced instrument. It's made in Japan. It's the instrument that I grew up on uh, in university because it was the nice marimba at my university. So I would say the 5100 is worth a try. Now, why would I say it's worth a try? It's because the 5100, the sound profile is pretty flat. Like it sounds good for Keiko Abe style music or music where you need to move up and down the registers without any difference in you know, wild frequency fluctuations. It's great for Japanese music. In terms of the actual frame design, however, very outdated. Like the frame gas lift collapses after a couple of years because it's just not strong enough for such a heavy instrument. The resonators, I again, don't really like the stacked resonator look, the boxy stacked resonators, but also it kind of just sits on the frame with these two narrow slits. So they kind of sway around a lot when you move the instrument. And if I had to choose between say the Yamaha and the Bergerol, I'll choose the Yamaha. 100%. Which brings me to the final instrument here, the YM6100. Now the YM6100 is similar to the 5100, but it's white, it's got a white rail, and it's the Keiko Abe signature marimba. So it's basically representative of the very first YM6000, which is the first five octave marimba in the world that was made by Keiko Abe and Yamaha back in 1984. The YM6100 is a historically significant instrument, but it's also a historically significant instrument that has been in improved because <laughs> it's been improved over the 6000 it's a little bit cleaner looking the gas lift function is a little bit better uh, it still has the traditional style broken resonators as they used to have back in the old days which in this instrument actually looks okay i don't mind it so much and it sounds more interesting so i would say hmm, it's either here or here i'd say just because of the x factor because of the historical value and because it looks cool i'd say goodbye nice I'd say it's a good buy. Yeah. If Marimba 1 didn't exist, I'd be pretty happy to have a YM6100 in my living room. Okay, so going through the tier list again from the bottom, the Merc category, things I would never touch, the Masa M500, yeah, just, nah, terrible. The two big Malatex, yep, yeah, if I could, I would not choose to play those two instruments. Just okay, we've got the Bergerol. Yeah, if I really have to play the Bergerol, I'll play it. Uh, the Majestic Reflection, yeah, not my favorite, but if I really have to, I'll play it. Two uh, smaller Maltex, the Stiletto and the M-Tech. Yep, yeah, if I really have to, I would play those. The Worth a Tries, I've got the Demoro. It's definitely a decent sounding instrument. Got the Majestic Concert Black, much better than the Reflection in my opinion. And the Yamaha YM5100. Okay, and then we've got Goodbye. We've got the Adams Alpha on the Z frame. If the Adams Alpha was on the Voyager frame, it would probably be in worth a try, but because the Z frame's a little bit better, goodbye. YM6100, just a really cool instrument. When I went to Keiko Abe's university, to Hogakuen, and I saw it in person, I was like, that is really nice. <laughs> and finally, best buy, we've got Marimba 1 Wave, Marimba 1 Izzy, Marimba 1 3100. Three incredible instruments at the top. So let me know down in the comments below, what would your tier list look like? What would you put in the best buy category? Because I know everybody's gonna have different tastes. I'm sure some people will put the MJB as best buy. I'm sure some people will put Demoro as the best buy. But yeah, it's always interesting to hear people's perspectives. And most importantly, when you're talking about marimba stuff with people, remember that everybody has different wants and needs. Just like when you buy a car or any other large scale investment, everybody is different. And that's what makes percussion so beautiful. If you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it and let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this more tier list content i love making tier lists it's just something that never gets old for me and hit that red subscribe button below if you haven't already to keep off my uploads also if you can hit that red subscribe button below on my vlog channel that's at adamtampercussion.com forward slash vlogs I'm going to be uploading more vlogs on that channel soon that are not related to percussion so if you want to see more content like that go check it out <laughs>
Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.